Welcome to Mindset, where we journey through the realms of mind and body to unlock the full potential of human wellness. Join your host, Alex Muir, as we explore transformative health hacks, debunk myths, and empower you with knowledge straight from the experts. Dive into each episode ready to flex your mind, body, and soul, because your ultimate well-being journey starts right here. And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. In today's episode 117, we're going to be speaking with Sari Star. Sari Star is a visionary, quantum cre- creatrix, plant medicine alchemist, and author of Let the Magic Be Your Guide, From Micro to Hero. With over 20 years' experience of training in human potential, Sari has evolved from a successful creative agency owner to a pioneering force in cannabis culture and plant medicine. She's the founder of Celestial Smokes, a hemp CBD line, and previously launched Redefining Cannabis and Cannabis Retreats, which have been featured in Rolling Stone, Huffington Post, and High Times. Sari now guides individuals towards self-liberation and higher states of consciousness through mushroom ceremonies, integration mentorship, and online facilitator training. Let's dive into her remarkable journey and insights. Sari, welcome to... Back, well, welcome for the first time to the Mindset Podcast. I was listening to you, yourself and Omar's uh, episode, and I was really blown away. And how, kind of your unique background, you're a former Canadian and then, you know, living in uh, California. So let's dive right into it. Let, so welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, exciting. Always a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak, speak what spirit wants to come through and reach audiences that are beyond my direct communication so yeah yeah and i want to start let's start off by talking about your most recent retreat so um like like you know cannabis culture and getting everyone together right and um it's like it's like super big in in california and and i know you're in hawaii but kind of how did all that come together and like uh, you know getting everyone together for these events yeah so first i want to prep preface that um, everything I do with these plant medicines is under Sanctuary 72, which is a 508C1A plant medicine church. Um, It was established a year ago here in Hawaii. So we are really dedicated to devotional practice of our spiritual evolution, conscious awakening, using plant medicine as part of the modalities that we use. There's other, obviously other aspects of trainings that we've been through and we guide people in. So our last retreat, um, so we have different types of retreats. We have um, private ceremonies. We have um, retreats for long periods, like eight days, five days, a weekend. Um, This last one was um, part of the advanced training. So I do an online training that's uh, 22 weeks for facilitator training for how to hold space and ceremony and facilitator training for mushrooms and cannabis uh, and other plant medicines, but those are the focus, the two main ones. And so this was an opportunity for some of the graduates to come and train in person. And it's really uh, a powerful experience to do that in Hawaii because this island is in itself really energetically powerful and potent. And you learn a lot just from being here. Um, The land has a lot of transmissions and the frequency here is much different than the mainland. Um, You can't really hide from yourself. So it's also lends to having a bigger experience when you come out here with medicine. Um, So that is in itself an experience. And then we um, take our initiates through the ceremony and then they take us through a ceremony. So it's, you know, they get to practice on us which is really powerful, you know, to receive your students training and have that experience. I was able to really move through my own stuff because it's an evolution that never ends. <laughs> no, totally. We're, we're all a work in progress. We're all uh, uh, like uh, trying to learn um, through our own journey. And, uh, and all of each and every one of us needs a coach, needs a mentor, needs a guide. And, um, and I feel like, a lot of people maybe lose that along the way is like, oh, like uh, they're trying to maybe do like a solo mission to, towards their destination and towards their career progression or their business, developing a business idea or getting their business off the ground. And, uh, 
it just, it, it just, you know, uh, especially over the last few years, I've just come to the realization is you can't do it on your own. You need lots of help. And anyone that looks like they're, they're doing it like all on their own, they got a lot of help. And no, it takes a village for sure. It takes a village, it takes a community. And, um, so like, yeah, like let, let's, let's talk about that of like, how, how did that kind of ideation of you getting into the, like reframing the cannabis culture and that narrative and now it's legal in Canada, like has been since whatever, 2016. Yeah. Um, but I know it's not in a lot of other countries, but like, like kind of let's talk about how like people sometimes use it. Like for myself, I, I use the THC oil. So my friend like grows his own leaves and then he actually turned like heated up the leaves and turned it into an oil with, with coconut oil. So I find it super beneficial and yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I'm still learning all this, but he said, um, yeah, he, he heated up the leaves, used coconut oil with it. And then I, I've been using it just like a, a, a quarter of a teaspoon because I'm so sensitive to it. Rick Simpson oil. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and then I've been using it as a supplement, microdosing that. Um, mm -hmm. to help me just, you know, with anxiety, with overwhelm. And it has been really, really helping a lot. And then, and then with recovery, muscle inflammation from training, because yeah. I do HIIT training and it's super intense. And like, I track everything on my Fitbit and sometimes my Fitbit's like, um, oh my God, like you need to dial, you need to dial it back. You're, you're going too hard. So I've been using the THC oil, you know, intermittently, not every day, but when I feel like I need it and I like, again, it with pain, with inflammation, it's been a game changer. So, yeah. Well, you know, just to touch on that and then I can tell you, you know, a little bit of the backstory, but what you're actually doing is also seriously preventative Rick Simpson oil, which Rick Simpson was this dude from Canada and he created, you know, that's what he did. He made this oil and throughout all these like experiences that he had with people, you realize like it cures, <laughs> we can't yeah. use that word, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, many, many, many diseases um, that are plaguing our society. And so what you're doing right now is seriously preventing anything that would manifest from inflammation as a disease because it is super anti-inflammatory and a lot of diseases come from inflammation of the body, especially like autoimmune and even cancer. So it's really good that you are doing this for the future and not just for your present self who's benefiting from it. So, yeah. No, totally. And then, um, you're, we were speaking a little bit about, um, like prior about your, your training, your background, like some of the things that have really been game changers for you and, your mission and your vision. And one of those people that's been a huge influence on your life, you mentioned was, uh, which there's been a list, but, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's training advance, advanced quantum training. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that, like what that experience was like and how it's kind of maybe sh helped you shift your mindset over time or give you a different perspective or. Yeah. I mean, before plant medicine even came into the picture, I've always been like, I guess, um, explorer of consciousness. Actually, cannabis was the beginning of that. When I was young, I would smoke weed with my friends in high school and we would just like, you know, nerd out on the meaning of life. That's what we did in high school. So it was the gateway, but it was a gateway to higher consciousness. And through that lens, I started looking at teachers and I found um, what the bleep do we know, like is a movie I don't know, it's over 20 years ago at this point. And Joe Dispenza, he was on the movie and he was the one that I reson really resonated with. He talked about how you can wake up every morning and create your day. And I was like, what? This, what is he talking about? And that kind of opened the door for me to like be um, in his field of learning his teachings for over two decades. And it was a dream of mine to go to one of his trainings and, um, you know, I would just constantly be aware of all the things he was talking about. You create your own reality and taking energy and turning it into matter. And um, as I was also studying like astral travel and learning how to astral project and lucid dreaming and 
all of these ideas of like how we aren't this body, we're actually like a holographic projection. Um, he was speaking about all these quantum theories that were really interesting to me. And I went to his, um, so I got to go to his advanced training in 2020 because the waiting list was a lot lower then. So I was really like stoked about that. As soon as I got the email, I'm like going. And, you know, it was more of like, him affirming what I had already known. But one of the things that I realized that he was doing was he was activating psychedelic journeys within people um, without psychedelics. And one woman next to me, at the time I had recently done Bufo. I don't know if you're familiar with Bufo, 5-MeO-DMT, which is one of the like strongest psychedelics. It's from the toad. And it takes you. Oh, that one that Mike Tyson did. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, you know, blindfolded and we're all in meditation doing his meditation. And all of a sudden, like this person next to me just whacks me, like, because we're sitting on the floor and it's like a whole like um, room, like conference room vibes. And I look, I take off the blindfolds and she's just flailing around, right? She's loose. She, and somebody was helping her, one of his volunteers. And that's what happens when you're in that state of pure bliss out of your body, not even aware that you, the identity exists. And I saw that and it, I was like, oh, I get what he's doing. He is activating plant medicine states without consumption, just through his meditation, his techniques. And so, but that was such an intense experience for that woman. Like I was always wondering like, whatever happened, you know, after that, because it was a Kundalini awakening pretty much. Um, but yeah, his message has, it's always in my mind. Like every time I have like a, an internal challenge or question, I often go to, well, what would Joe Dispenza say? What would Joe Dispenza do? You know, like when I feel like the world is about to like implode on itself and all of these narratives are overwhelming, I'm like, but what's Joe Dispenza doing? He's in his own lane. He doesn't give, you know, he doesn't give a crap yeah. about yeah. who's going to be president or whatever. He's just in his own lane, focused on, expanding consciousness and helping as many people as possible, which is what inspires me to stay in my lane and continue to do the same thing and not get into the trap of this, these duality narratives that are out there to distract us from connecting to source, which is what he's doing. So he's a huge mentor in my life. Everybody knows. I always reference him in all my trainings. I'm like, you got to read his books. You got to watch his videos. You got to do that. And people have gone to his trainings because I've recommended them. So, you know, that's awesome. I, uh, I was actually, uh, speaking of Hawaii, I actually kind of hit my peak. I was like, I'm still consistent with the meditation, but I still have my on and off days where I, where I forget to do it. But I use the Oak app. It's called OA, OAK. And that's the, just the woman that speaks. It's just like so relaxing. And I just, it helps me. And then I have the bells, right? You, you pick your background sound and, uh, I do the Tibetan Alm or like, or like river or, and then it just, it just, boom, it's just like helps me get to that. Like you're talking about consciousness, that next layer of consciousness where I'm just like, I'm just right here. I'm nowhere else. Like I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about anything. And, um, and then in his book, he was talking about how he, he is like insanely disciplined. Like he, he wait, I think he still does it. He wakes up at 4am and he meditates yeah. for like an hour yeah. or two. And that's the level that I got to because I was reading his book as I was kind of integrating his teachings into my meditation practice and I really deepened it. And I, I got to the point where I did an hour, that's one amazing. hour wow. meditation. And it was so, it was like one of those things where it was like so painful at first. Cause you're, cause you're like, Oh my God, it feels like a really long time, a really long time. Cause I was consistently doing 20 to 30 minutes every day that's at that point. Yeah. And then we get to Ma like we get to Maui. It was like a family trip, my me and my wife and her family. And then we're we're at the resort. And I think it was it also helped. It wasn't a fun experience because we were up for like 30 hours straight because of flight delays, because we went during the holidays, which I don't recommend anyone do, right? During Christmas time. But we got there. I meditated that morning before the mayhem. And then when we got there, like we we're we we're both all we were all so exhausted. And then we got to Maui. I instantly passed out on like on the pillow, wake up the next day, do another 30 minutes. And then it's when I came, we came back home. So I was consistently doing 20 to 30 minutes a day. 
and I was still reading his book. But when I got back home, that's when I did my first hour. I was like, you know, it was like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and then 45 minutes and then boom. And then an hour. And I was like, I just couldn't believe I even could do it. And I was like, Oh my God. And yeah. I was telling my friends about it. It was like a whole nother level of like you of quieting your mind. You just don't like, I can't say nothing phases me, but like, uh, nothing was getting to me as much because I was just totally expansive thinking, like just slow, slow down the thought process, like as much as I was able to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's amazing. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So his teachings work, his, mo his, uh, philosophy really works and you can do it in small amounts of time, right. Over time. And then eventually, um, like yeah. And the 4am thing is because that's when the veil is thinnest between worlds and what he's actually, you know, yeah, he's teaching meditation, but he's also teaching astral projection. And that's when he actually astral projects. He has told stories. He told stories about leaving his body and going into alternate dimensions and being in this like full on war. And when you learn about astral projection, you realize like this is just another dream state that we're in. It's very interesting and mind blowing but yeah so those times 4 a.m which i haven't really you know i i've I haven't consistently been like every 4 a.m but if i wake yeah. up at 4 a.m i'm like get that meditation on like let's go yeah. you know this is the prime yeah. time yeah um, but i haven't set my alarm to do that and it's okay because i i have other means of using his modalities too it's it's a state of being you know and yeah all the people have influenced me especially the reprogramming of my cells through plant medicine. So I feel like plant medicine reprograms my cells. And then these teachers that I have are my integration mentors. They help me integrate the non-duality of what it is when we're in those altered states of consciousness. And then we don't approach the world in a similar fashion as most people, you know, and then we're the weird ones. Yeah, yeah, the outcast. Yeah. No, I don't and, subscribe to your they're right, they're wrong mentality. I'm not part of that. And my life is awesome. You're very stressed. My life is awesome, you know. So So how do um so what do you mean by that non duality? Because I don't really understand that. Maybe our listeners don't really understand that. So yeah. what is what is what is meant uh, by the term non duality? Yeah, so non duality is rooted in Vita Vita Vedante. It's um, like the Buddhist mentality, the Buddhist religion of there's no like right or wrong. There's, you know, everything is in um, the center of the polarities, right? So for this world to actually exist as it does, we need a negative and positive polarity. That's what allows us to create as human beings in this reality. If there was no negative or shadow or darkness, we would not be able to do like exist pretty much. And so we are taught to fear the negative. The negative is bad. And so that pushes us more into the shadows where we act out from an unconscious um, negative space, which can lead to like very bad things in the world. Right. But if you look at the polarities as like there's always an opposite charge to everything, there's always going to be like um, like an, a perspective that allows you to see, um, you know, one way and then the opposite way. And they both exist at the same time. So if we are just the observer in the neutral part, in the non-dual, right, then I can I see what you're in between those two polarities and not have any attachment to either outcome, even though my mind thinks one outcome is good, one outcome is bad. But that's not true, you know. Right. They're both good and they're both bad, so to speak. They're both going to have the same effects. Like if you win the lottery, you're going to think it's good. But winning the lottery could also, will also, not could, but will likely also produce some things that are challenging and negative. If you lose all your money, you might think that's bad. But losing all your money could also produce things that are awesome for you to up level in your life. And yeah. if we're only seeing one side of the coin and chasing a fantasy, we're stuck in duality that we're never going to have that peace. So the non-dual is like sitting in the middle of everything as the observer and saying, well, nothing matters unless I put meaning to it. So that's my free will. What do I, what meaning do I decide on anything that happens in life? 
I remember um, these quotes come on my phone from that Oak app. And yeah, speaking about non-duality, now it makes, now I understand a lot better. Um, so Marcus Aurelius, that the like original Caesar, yeah. he said a quote. Uh, oh yeah, the, 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 the happiness of our thoughts determines, our, our happiness is determined by our, our thoughts. And, and if we're con- consistently thinking bad, we're going to feel bad. If we're consistently finding ways to create and cultivate like our own happiness, then we will predominantly be in that state. So, and I know it's not always achievable to be happy in like, like a hundred percent of the time, right? Cause things can, there's can be challenges and stuff like that and setbacks. But I do believe from what you're saying that we can be more in the middle and be more of an observer of everything that's going on and not as reactive. And that's what the mindfulness teachings and training really help um, develop for people. Yeah. And one of the things that plant medicine has helped me is, you know, one of the biggest overwhelming emotions in life is grief. When we lose something that we're energetically, mentally, physically attached to. And what it showed me is that I can feel this grief, but I'm not taken over by it. It doesn't consume me to the point where it opens the door to depression or, you know, like worse. Right. And so it's sitting in these moments of anger, sadness, grief, and really being present with them being like, Oh, this is how I feel. I'm going to allow myself. I'm not going to push it away. I'm not going to try to fix it. It's not about that. It's just about being present with what's happening. And it's so counter to what our society is telling us like, Oh, you feel sad. Take a pill oh, you need to chase this happiness, but you're not going to get there. So do something else, like distract yourself with this or with that or buy more things or, you know, and it's very like, don't feel your feelings, especially if they're negative, just keep chasing the good feelings. And it's a yeah. perpetual cycle of suffering. Yeah. So it's like really allowing yourself to feel those feelings. Yeah. And I'm someone naturally, I can't bury stuff like some people can do. And I don't honestly don't know how other people can do that because I, I, I've never been able to like, I've always worn my heart on my sleeve and been heart centered and say how I feel, feel how I feel. And that's, you know, like society's very polar opposite. So that's made a lot more challenges in my life. But I've also realized as I've aged, it's actually done me a lot of good and, and, and helped uh, keep really strong bonds and relationships with people because they know I'm hundred percent genuine. Yeah. So there's no, there's no beating around the bush with me. You get what you get, what you see, you see what you get. Um, because I don't know any other way. It's just how I was taught. Like, you know, my mom, and dad are like, Oh, Alex, like we can't help you when you're not telling us hundred percent the truth. Right? right. Always be honest with us. Right. So like when I was really young and I, you know, first starting to drink and stuff, they're like, yeah, you want a cider or a glass of wine? You want to try a, a beer? Like, do it right in front of us, right? There's no need to go into the woods, into the bushes with your friends and do it. Like, there's no sense in doing that because, right? There could be, there could be other stuff going on that's more, even more dangerous, right? So, like, do it in front of us. Like, have a drink in front of us, and like, there's, there's no, there's no, n- nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. So they always, they always just encourage like brutal honesty, and because that's how they are, and just be myself all the time. Like, don't. Just be unapolog- un- unapologetically yourself and, you know, and if people don't like that, eh, too bad. Yeah, it's not our job to make people comfortable, but no, that's a yeah. whole different, you know, podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People pleasing yeah. and cancel yeah. culture. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. different topic. <laughs> no, totally. There's, there's, there's all sorts of that stuff going on. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing that you touched on that really... Um, I think a lot about, and especially nowadays, like I'm, I'm constantly trying to work on that. And I know a lot of other people probably struggle with this as well. And you taught, you did touch on it, but let's dive a little bit deeper into that. How can people not obsess so much on the outcome or the result of, of the destination, uh, or along the journey? Cause I have a tendency to fixate on, okay, I, I have this vision. I have this thing that I want. I have the vision. I know what I want. But the path to getting there sometimes can be blurred. It can be obscure. It can be ambiguous, uncertain. And that's where a lot of people have challenges with. And that's what I have challenges with. So I have the vision. We have like, you've kind of created your your path to getting there. 
the path will change to getting there. But how do you teach people and how do you, and how have you taught yourself? I am not, uh, I don't care about the byproduct of the outcome of the result. How do we, people either care less, whether there's a result or outcome out of the mission or just not fixate on it so much. Well, I think two things come up for me. One of them is what you desire desires you. Right. It's in our, like, our soul's purpose is in our, like, DNA. When, if we believe that we've come here for a specific mission, then when we follow that soul's purpose, we know that it's it's meant to happen. Like we And so there's this aspect of if I want it, it wants me. So there's that surrender to that. And the other thing is, is that Carolyn Lovewell, yeah, quote yeah. her, having is the evidence of wanting. So whatever you have in your life, you want. And if what you perceive that you have is something that you don't want, then you need to go into your subconscious and do a bunch of exercises that she offers and that many Joe Dispenza and all these trainings that I amalgamate and also bring my own into um, to look at why your subconscious is manifesting what you think you don't want or all these challenges to get to where you want to go. And then the third thing that I would say is in terms of like future projecting, when we put this idea of like, okay, I want to be a published author. Okay, great. Somebody wants to be a published author and they have a timeline in their mind. I want to be a published author by this day. Actually, I'll take it into like my own experience. I wanted to be a musician. I was just like, I need to be a musician, but I never thought it was going to happen. I always thought, oh, now you're too old or whatever. You should have started when you were a kid and blah, blah, blah. Like story, story, stories. And then yeah. one day I just took a course in sound healing and I allowed myself to be in the process of the becoming. And my teacher, another teacher, would say, you like this mantra that we would repeat, I am a musical genius. And this was something that all of a sudden I began to embody. And I'm like, wait a second, I'm already a musician. And I, I swear, I out of nowhere started playing um, this baritone guitar that I had that I couldn't play for so long. I saw her playing it. I picked up, I started playing it. I knew the chords. I knew how to transition. It was a quantum entanglement with her. So this goes back to our mind has this idea and stories that we've created based on only our past experiences. We can only understand what we're associated with, like has already happened. When we do that, we project that into the future, which immediately causes limitations to us actually gaining what we truly want in the time that is aligned. What you want is there waiting for you when you raise your frequency to match that experience. That's all it is. Your frequency needs to match that experience. If your frequency wants it, you're not at it. You can't have what you actually want. You got to go to my TikTok. I talk all about all these and Instagram and stuff, but you can't have what you want. You already have what you want. And it's a kind of a mind fuck, but the wanting itself is the thing that prevents you from having it. And so when you go back to having is the evidence of wanting, I already have everything I want. But as soon as I want something else, I've limited that access. So it's like having a vision of like, what is my desire? My holy desire is to be this person or to have these things. And it's like, great. And then Joe Dispenza will be like, become that which you seek. And you're like, how does it feel if I already had everything that I see? And you just live as though you have it and boom, it'll just show up. But you know what? You're going to be like, oh, cool. That's cool. But I already feel the thing, so it's not going to change me, right. right? Oh, I re I remember him saying that in his book. Yeah, he's like, it's like uh, I had I asked actually that question, um, because like, yeah, I asked that to a mentor actually like a couple of years ago, and then he he says this one line that stuck with me, and it's still sticking with me. He's like, he's like, he's like, how do I? I, I think I asked him like, how do I become a millionaire? Like, I I I want to become a millionaire. Like, I wanna. Teach people, teach people how to talk, become millionaires, talk on stage of like how, how I did it, right? 
and um and he's like alex be it until you see it yeah but like it's fake not it fake it till you make it, it. it i mean it is. it is it is fake it till you make it because it you're but it's not because like, you have to actually believe you have to fully. believe you have to believe it before you be it yeah as well that's the so, only way it happens because we're in a frequency reality and people don't really understand that. So they're like, I want this. I want this. I want this. Yeah. this wanting, scarcity. wanting, wanting all the time is the problem. Yeah, yeah. And the scarcity is what's preventing them from actually having it. And then they think they're doing something wrong. Oops. But the thing is, is they kind of are because you got to just be in full gratitude. That's why Joe Dispenza is always like gratitude is the way to like receivership. Total gratitude. And you're just like, fuck, look at my, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I could swear. I'd like, ah. No, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> just look at my life, you know, and look at, I have health. I have wealth. Wealth and wealth is not money, you know, and it's really like shifting those perspectives. And then yeah. all of a sudden somebody comes up to me and be like, hey, bro, let me give you this amount of money. I want to hire you or I want to just gift you this or I want to take you on this trip because you've been visioning, oh, I feel myself in Europe. How would it look like if I was walking down the streets of Italy and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm going to go to Italy. You want to come with me? It's on me. And it's like, we can't fathom that because we think, oh, that's just too good to be true. That will never happen to me. I've seen it happen. It does. I've seen it, it happen does. to me. I've seen it happen yeah. to my friends where they don't have any money. And somebody's like, oh, I want a friend to come on a trip with me. Just come on. I'm going to pay for everything. And it's yeah. like, Ah, she's like, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's, that happens. So this is all about living in the magic of our reality instead of the hard linear. And Joe Dispenza is always like, you have a choice. You can, you can manifest by turning matter into matter. And that might take you 30 years to buy a house or pay off a mortgage or whatever, or you can take energy and turn it into matter. And that's like instant. Yeah. So, and I, I feel like that's, that's something that I've been, I've already seen results of that. Like what you're talking about, like, cause I'm, cause I, lo I, I love, I have, I have lots of vision. Like I have my vision and I've already crossed off a ton of things off my, like my mental checklist. Cause like the, the mental talking about mental projection, like I've crossed off like so many of my dreams off my list. And like, I, I have like zero regrets and I still have a lot of other things I'm, you know, I'm working towards, but like you said, the biggest thing I'm trying to learn how to do is be, you know, more in gratitude. Because every time I go back to gratitude, go back to being in the here and the now, that's when things flood in because you're not fixating on stuff. So it's, yeah. A big lesson for that because our society is very focused on what's next. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. this. What's next? Yeah. You're not even in the energy of receiving it's very masculine oriented right so you know yeah. we've been talking about divine feminine divine masculine the divine masculine is the action action oriented like going out and getting doing it's great yeah the divine feminine is like okay i i receive let me just be in what i have created let me revel and receive from the masculine that was me and, and enjoy it, right? A lot of yeah. the times we're not even enjoying it. We're not even like yeah. nourishing ourselves in it, celebrating it. It's like, oh, $50,000 deal, great. Oh, I just made 100,000, great. What's next? What's next? Yeah. And it's like, what do you mean? What's enough? What's now? <laughs> Instead of what's yeah. next, like what is now? And that's a way to like get out of that pull of like, because that is a deep program in the entrepreneurial world of our society that was created to actually not be able to be satiated in what we have achieved in this moment here and now. And that is a dangerous thing because at the end of life, when you're thinking back, wow, did I even enjoy what I created or was yeah. I always thinking about what, what, what's, what's next? Yeah. And that's something I've really been thinking a lot about because I have like for the last like decade, especially I've been like, what's next? What's next? Okay. Okay. I got this. What's next? What's next? Cause it is like, you're talking about on your, in your bio and your website, like, and you're from what you've learned, like the societal pressure of constantly striving for more, which I there's good and there's bad, but 
I want to enjoy it. I want to love what I'm doing. That's been my, that's really my main mission now is like, I want to be loving what I'm doing. Cause yeah. when you love what you do, you don't like they say, you don't work a day in your life. And I know there's people that disagree with that. They're like, no, you're, you know, like it's all about having some people like Cal Newport. He's like, oh, you need to have focus on not loving what you do, but having high utility skills that create uh, great work and money. But I'm like, I, I still disagree with that. I still believe wholeheartedly if you love what you're doing the time flies by you're enjoying yourself and when you enjoy yourself that magnifies what you can create and what and in return what can what you receive and again i think it's really like maybe i don't know who that guy is but maybe he works pretty hard in the 3d world yeah and good for him yeah but you can become a millionaire in that through energy frequency ritual and magic yeah. Just dedicate so your time like, to that. Yeah. And that that's my mission. That's what I want to do. So. Yeah. There's many paths to the things that we desire. We've yeah. only just been shown one and that's through yeah. the, the, the heaviness of the physical. Yeah. But I, a long time ago, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not into yeah. this. You know, yeah. this is like, this means I need to follow the rules of the system and the rules of the system are designed to enslave me. And I'm not interested in that. So how do I get beyond the rules of the system? I'm not trying to go against the matrix. Yeah. I am trying to yeah. understand it so that I can yeah. use it to my benefit yeah. and also create the rituals because yeah. everything in this reality has been spelled into existence. And people yeah. are like, oh, that's woo woo. It's actually, no, it's pretty scientific if you want to go down quantum you know, physics and that world. But Science is just catching up with spirituality. It's trying to understand what is unknown and and documenting it as like data. And then it's constantly recorrecting itself. So yeah, there was, an there was another. That. Yeah, yeah. So like the art. Yeah, the art of manifestation. Lewis Howes. He talks a lot about that in his podcast and the books that he's read. And one of the books I can't remember. I think I read that book and they had a movie on it too, The Secret. Like, oh, the art yeah. of right? They talk yeah. about the art of manifestation and all that. Yeah, like, the law of attraction. Law of attraction. Like, I totally believe that. Like, um, yeah, I can just... even take you a step further on that one because it's actually not the law of attraction. It's the law of assumption, which is Neville Godard. Oh. Which Neville Godard is one of, like, the OG quantum physics. He's, like, the OG Joe Dispenza of the 1930s. And he said, you know, it's a law of assumption because what you – assume to be true will manifest will be what you attract because it's not you can't force your mind to attract things you can't fix the mind through the mind no so your subconscious assumptions is actually what's creating your reality yeah interesting interesting yeah um yeah that just made me uh <laughs> so for for hawaii right so like I, I remember listening to the, to the podcast with yourself and Omar and you said you just didn't feel like you fit in, in Canada. You didn't feel like that was the nation that you want to stay in. And then you, and then you moved to California and then, and then you're there for a while. And then what made you want to make the move from California to Hawaii? COVID. Oh yeah. 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 It really turned around my paradise in Venice beach. But also I realized like I was also kind of hiding in this like awesome apartment, you know, being very isolated. And um, I'm like, I didn't come, I didn't come here to this world to isolate myself. Like it yeah. just, even like before COVID it was like that. And then COVID just amplified that. And then things started going like really chaotic in LA. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta get that out of here i'm not into this yeah i don't subscribe to this yeah so it was almost like you know once i made that decision i was like okay where do i go it was kind of like well the mushrooms i did a, a ceremony and mushrooms were like all right you're going to hawaii like you know i had somebody in my life who was talking to me about the big island a lot he was there for a while and so it was kind of in my like fields, but I never thought like, oh, I want to live in Hawaii. Like I had been there twice before. I've been to 
different islands. And I was like, yeah it's, yeah, it's cool. I was like, yeah, nice vacation spot, but I don't really feel connected to it. But I never came to the big island and he was talking about it a lot. And I was like, well, maybe, I don't know. That's might be the, the step. And then the vision through the mushrooms, like you better start packing your bags. And, and I saw this house that I was looking at, I couldn't buy it, but I was just like in love with it. And like, it was on the vision board. And then the mushrooms told me to contact the real estate agent for this house. Oh, and I was like, what I'm in my, like, what are you talking about? I can't afford those. Like just contact her or I didn't know it was a her, but I did. And she was the catalyst that brought me here because I started talking to her and she had two Huskies and I had a Husky at the time. And that was like a bonding thing. We became like friends, like right away through email. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, it seems like you're going to be my first friend. She's like, yeah, I'll show you around. So I ended up going there and she took me around. So as I looked at that house, she showed me the house and, you know, but when I went there to explore, it was like, this is it, your home. And I was like, whoa. I did not, you know, and so after a month being here, I went back to LA and I just sold everything, got rid of it. Like talk about getting rid of stuff that you've spent a lot of money on that all of a sudden meant nothing. Cause you're just like, get me out of here. An apartment that I loved so much. You know, this was a huge lesson in non-attachment. Bye yeah. time to go. And just came back here and, you know, after a year I bought my house and that in itself was a miracle. Like to buy a house wow. in 2021, like you didn't, I didn't claim income. Right. So it's like a whole thing. I did a lot of Joe Dispenza spells for this to happen. And it did. It was crazy. I couldn't even, I was even shocking myself at how this ended up happening. But now, you know, five acre property, this beautiful house I've been renovating for two years because Hawaii is so wow. like, hurry up and slow down. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to renovate in three, four months. It's like, nope, you're going to be, but at least I have like set up where I can live here downstairs. And my partner now is like just building the upstairs and we're getting so close. And then we're going to, um, yeah, it's just been a place for healing. Anyways, we, we do our ceremonies here and it's just a beautiful place. The land called it was vacant for like since 2018. Nobody was Holy. here, so it was waiting for me. Wow. So yeah, waiting like, for I, me to match the frequency. Yeah, yeah. So you were in a different frequency before you left California, right? Yeah. And then you you had to kind of rebuild and retrain yourself for that next frequency. Yeah. So talking about not not fixating on things and be just like you said, being open, being open to kind of just the opportunity. You don't care about the result. You're just how did you? Yeah, I remember this this defining moment. Well, first getting the mortgage was like so challenging, but then, um, then I got the approvals. You know, I went through uh, unconventional means. I found it's just all these this long stories, but it was wild. And then I got the approval, and then they're like, "Oh, we thought your investments were in the U.S., but it looks like they're in Canada. I don't know if we can accept that." I'm like, "I've been doing this with you for like three months, oh my and you knew that." Yeah, and then there was yeah. a whole like lava zone situation, and then the oh, not yeah, wanting yeah. to finance a lava zone. So like all the cards were like, "No, no, no," right? Anyways, so it was like right before I was gonna get the closing. I went to the cliffs here and I was like at the ocean and I was feeling stressed. I'm like, man, I already moved out of my old place. I'm like staying at a friend's. I don't have a place to live and it's not easy to rent with a dog. You know, people don't yeah. want pets all the time. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, what do I do? So I sat there. I was like, first I went to worst case scenario. I'm a nomad. Fine. I live in Hawaii. I'll just figure it out. And then I was like, Okay, what would Joe Dispenza do? And then I'm like, well, if I'm matching this frequency, does somebody who owns a house have anxiety and fear? And I was like, no, that can't be here. So I sat there, I did his meditation at the cliffs. I sat, did the whole thing. I raised my frequency. I was like, I have everything I need. My, my life is amazing. 
I do not subscribe to being stressed or having anxiety. I will not allow those feelings to come in because that is not the frequency of somebody who gets what she wants. And after the meditation, I was like, okay, I'm good. I went to sleep that night. I'm like, whatever happens, it is what it is. I let go. And the next morning they're like, oh yeah, we're good. Congratulations. You got the house. I'm like, <laughs> that's awesome. And then yeah, I was like, yeah, it's of the letting go. You got to let go. Yeah. We got to, we got to, we got to be open. Well, we got to let go. We gotta, that I was yeah. supposed to have this house. Maybe I was just supposed to go through the process. And then it was like, no, that's all you needed. That's, that was your lesson. And I was like, you know, we can't assume that the outcome that we want is the outcome. That's the best outcome for us. It's only our yeah. ego mind that wants something, you know? And I was like, you know what universe, if I'm meant to have a house, like now deliver, because I'm done with this energy of like back and forth, back and forth, either give it to me now, or I'm not even yeah. I'm letting go of the search. And I'm just going to like nomad yeah. my life and figure yeah. this out. And I'm, you know, cause it felt yeah. very strong that I needed to have it. But then it was like, I'm not, I'm done with these games. Like <laughs> show up or I'm out. Yeah. Or get out of here. On something else, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, you know, but we get attached because I don't know many reasons so many reasons yeah well it's it's a societal thing it's been taught since like everyone's been a young age of like to you know fixate on the outcome the results uh, you know what we're getting and then move on to the next thing and yeah um, and it's a scarcity mind of if i don't yeah. have like it's this thing of like i'm gonna yeah. lose but you don't yeah. lose what you never had and you don't yeah. have anything that's also an yeah. illusion you don't really have anything Anything can yeah. be taken in a second yeah. in your life. Yeah. So it's like letting go of those identities and just knowing that I'm here. I show up every day. I'm like doing the inner work and I'm here to play with the universe. Like I'm literally here to play like a video game. And if somebody said the most, I have a, a course that I'm in right now and it's about money and the planetary, like it's really cool. There's a lot you can learn when you learn about your relationship with money, about your relationship oh, with everything. Totally. So she said, you know, somebody's like, well, how do I deal with like the energies of when somebody like scams me and like the, takes some takes my money and whatever. And that whole situation happens. And she's like, well, if that happens to me, then I just celebrate how brilliant that person was to actually complete that scam. And it's like, whoa, that's a, that's a mastery, emotionally intelligent mentality. It's like, wow, congratulations. You were smart enough to take advantage of me and I'm pretty fucking smart. Sorry. And I'm pretty, smart, <laughs> so, um, God celebrate you, you know, you did it. Congratulations. You won the level of this game. And it's really just that, but instead of going, Oh, my life is over. You know, I almost had all of my crypt Bitcoin taken from me. I think it was like, an angel that prevented the transaction to happen. And I, I realized I was like, holy, I literally almost lost. And I, I have almost one Bitcoin. So, you know, wow. it's not, that's not a tiny amount. And I was like, in that moment, I was like, wow, I almost got scammed. I didn't get scammed, but maybe in another dimension I did, which is a whole other rabbit hole. But in this dimension, some angelic person or my highest self was like, no, you ain't Holy, doing that. You're not winning yeah. this. Game. So wow. that was wild. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, because one Bitcoin, I don't even know what it is now. It's like seventy five thousand or something. 60, oh, okay. 000. Still, still yeah, converted totally. to Canadian. That's a lot of money. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm because I'm I'm in finance uh, by day and podcaster by night. So <laughs> it's uh, I'm always thinking conversions all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I learned a big lesson. I put it on a hard wallet, and I'm just like, yeah. Um, triple check everything. And this is like the wild west. So I really yeah. felt like in that moment, cause, um, a friend of mine, he actually did end up giving away a big chunk of change, got scammed. Um, so I was just like, Oh, some angelic person or something was to not let the transaction like go through online, man. So, how did you, how did you score one point for me in that one? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, and I, 
I remember, yeah, hearing that from my dad a lot too. He's like, life's a game. Everything in life is temporary except death and taxes. That's his famous line. And I always, I always tell that to people. I'm like, it's so true. You do, you, we pay tax on the moment that we're 18 and then all the way until we die. And then our family pays the, the pays, you know, the, yeah. the estate tax. Right. So it's like, so that's why you can't get too caught up in anything. Cause we could be gone like that. Yeah. It's yep. crazy. But yeah, but no, like, uh, I would definitely want to do another episode with you there. Uh, Sari, this was an amazing episode and we really, I know, like, I know we're barely scratching the surface. This was just like, you know, a, a mini deep dive, but definitely want to have you on the show again. So what platforms are you most active on? How can our listeners get in touch with you and connect with you? Yeah. Well, I want to share if, you know, for people out there, um, that I do offer a facilitator training that's starting in November. Um, it's an online 22 week training on how to become a facilitator of mushrooms, plant medicine, and cannabis. It's super deep. And all of this stuff, we go in deep. Like, this is the thing. You can't hold space for somebody else if you haven't met yourself in these, like, inquiries or contemplations that I say, which is going Contemplations, to be, I like it. Yeah, that's going to be the name of my book. And that is a vision that I'm creating right now. Um, so that's coming up. Uh, private retreat in Hawaii, if you want to go one-on-one, -on -one, very deep. Um, we do that. You can come for five days or seven days and all of this inquiry, we go into the medicine. It's like, you can get access to therapists, healing modalities at the islands, like food nourishment. It's like super full on and, um, yeah, lots of things. So the church website is sanctuary 7272org And that's where a lot of the offerings are. Um, my Instagram is L O V E love Sari star S T A R R two R's and Sari star.com. Um, and then there's other things like the products. Um, but you can just find all of that through all the other things. So I don't want right to get on too many things. Just go. No, to totally, totally. A few links yeah. org is the hub of the church and all the wonderful, awesome things that we're creating through the church. Amazing. It was, a, it was an awesome episode with you, an awesome you. podcast, Sari, and uh, thanks so much. Really appreciate it uh, yeah. to have you on the show and uh, definitely want to do another deep dive on a few more episodes. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Looking All right, you take care. Okay, aloha. <laughs> thanks for tuning into this episode of Mindset. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support helps us bring you more inspiring content and, ex and expert insights. Join our community on social media at mind.sep on Instagram, at mind-sep on YouTube, and visit our website, Alexander Muir, that's Amazon Mike, UIR.com forward slash blog for more exclusive resources and updates. Until next time, keep optimizing your mind and body and see you in the next episode.